It's funny because when I first started sewing as well, I was like, press it, ironing, like who needs to do that? But it's only after I started doing it that I realized this is the difference between something that looks like an amateur sewn garment and something that looks like you could have bought it in yeah. a shop. Hello everyone and welcome to a lesson on pressing. I am here today with Barbara of Royal Black Couture who knows a thing or two about sewing and tailoring and as a result, pressing because pressing is such a huge part of tailoring. It is like the majority of tailoring, <laughs> arguably. I used to find pressing a very tedious task. I didn't like it and thought it was a waste of time. But uh, during my education as a tailor, I really learned to appreciate it because I could see that it elevated my sewing work to a new level. One of my teachers, she said that sewing is the base, but pressing is where the real magic happens. If you take the time and uh, learn the basics of pressing, you will realize that it looks much more clean and neat and professional, even if you're only a beginner or if you just get into sewing. It's funny because when I first started sewing as well, I was like, press it, ironing, like who needs to do that? But it's only after I started doing it that I realized like this is the difference between something that looks like an amateur sewn garment and something that looks like you could have bought it in yeah. a shop, yeah. professionally made. It's something that I still dread now, but like after I do it, I'm like, that was so worth it. It's always worth, always worth turning on the iron. You always yeah. regret when you skip it. Yeah, I can show you an old example of mine, a coat that I made 15 years ago. I have worn it every day, every winter for about 10 years. And the pressing work that I put in past then, it's still there. You can see the crisp edges and the buttonholes. It survived all that wear and tear. That's one of the examples that I like to show people when they ask why they should make the effort to press. Well, I'm convinced. How about we learn a little bit more about the specific techniques for specific circumstances? Yeah, I'd like to show you some techniques and tools so that you hopefully get convinced to um, appreciate ironing just as much as I do and you do and yeah. <laughs> the influencer agenda. We're trying to influence you to press your garments. Yes. <laughs> So the idea behind pressing is to soften the fibers of the fabric with the help of heat and moisture, then to bring the fabric that is now soft and moldable into the desired shape, then cool it and let it set so the shape that you have given the fabric will be permanently in the fabric and uh, be preserved. The easiest way to do that is with the help of steam. You can do that either with a steam iron or if you don't have a steam iron you can also use a domestic iron and a spray bottle. We have our fabric here laid out. You would just slightly mist it, not drench it or anything, just gently mist it and then iron it. It might sizzle a bit, but that is okay. Iron it and wait until it's dry. And it's just as crisp and um, nice and flat and smooth as with the steam iron. Yeah, I will show you some of the tools and techniques that will allow you to give your garments a very crisp and professional finish. No matter if you want to press the seam open or to one side, the first thing that I would do is to press it flat as it is, like this. I have got a steam iron now, so i show you with that. And by pressing it flat like this, you take out the tension of the thread and it makes it easier to um, do all the further steps because the fabric is already more moldable. So now that it's softened, I open it and uh, press it apart with my fingers and then I just apply steam. I also linger on top of the seam for a little bit so the weight of the iron can force the fabric into the new shape. As you can see here the seam allowance are already pressed open but they are not very flat and crisp yet. And there are some simple tools that can help you achieve that very sharp and tailored flat pressed seam look. The first tool I want to show you is a so-called clapper. That is a block of wood 
The purpose is to press down the seam that we have softened and to cool it down and take out the moisture. And I will just press on the seam like this, linger there for a little while. It takes the moisture out of the fabric and helps to set everything in place. If you don't have a clapper, you can improvise that with um, some kind of wooden block, maybe a cutting board or some kind of piece of wood, as long as it's not treated with varnish or uh, has a rough surface, any type of wood can be used as ironing tool or clapper. Yeah, now you can see that we have a very nice and flat and clean looking seam. The next thing I want to show you is not really a tool, um, but it's still important and that is a pressing cloth because there are some fabrics that are a bit delicate and if you press on them with the iron alone then you might get creases or other spots into the fabric. That is why we want to protect such delicate materials. I have got a piece of silk organza here that is a good pressing cloth for thin and light and delicate fabrics because it protects the fabric from the worst of the heat and pressure but it still is light enough to let the steam and uh, the warmth into the fabric. For fabrics that are less delicate, maybe cottons or uh, wool fabrics, I would recommend a pressing cloth, cloth out of 100% linen. And I use that for all kinds of fabric when I feel they need a bit of protection from the iron. This is a homemade small tailor's hem. And it's one of the most versatile and traditional pressing tools, I think. It can be used to press any seams or shapes that are not flat. So you will need some kind of thing to put underneath and to fill out the shape that we want to iron and press. They should be stuffed with sawdust because uh, a lot of places like Etsy or um, yeah, even some haberdashery shops, they sell tailor's hems that are stuffed with fabrics. I personally think they are not ideal for the task because sawdust is the only way to, have, um, to get a really firm and dense shape because the wood, it also takes up the moisture, it provides a sturdy background and that is the ideal um, tailor's hem filling in my opinion. So now I want to show you how to actually use this thing on a curved seam. And again, I would first soften the fibers and flatten the seam as it is. I will open it and try to find a curve of the hem that suits the curve of the seam. Then you can push apart the seam allowance like that and press and steam at the same time. Again, I try to linger on the seam for a little while, so I force the fabric into the desired shape, because if you go over it very fast, then the, the fabric doesn't have enough time to really set in place. You can't really use the clapper because the clapper only works on flat um, shapes and ways to work around that is you can either stretch it a bit so it's forced to really take on the round shape and what I like to do is kind of use my hands as a clapper like this that I'm not sure if all tailors would approve of that but I feel it also takes out some of the warmth and sets the fibers in place. You just have to take care that you don't burn yourself with the steam, of course. Now that we have pressed it, we can take it off and you can see that it's a nice round curve. If you feel it's not flat and crisp enough, we can do the same from the outside. Stretch it a little bit and then flatten it like this. 
This technique you would use for bust curves, for hip curves, but also for the caps or head of a sleeve. Yeah, now that we have let that set and cool off a bit, you can see that it's nice and um, crisp, smooth curve. And from the inside, the seam allowance is set in place. There are also more specialized kind of hems, like for example this, uh, which I would say is a corset hem. You can find them either on a stand like this or also without a stand. And it has these smaller, quite round curves that uh, work well to press the bust shape in corsets. Or also if you have uh, corsets with a small waist, then you can work the waist and hip curve into the fabric with a shape like this. Then we also have bigger tailor's hems like this one. And there are even some that are very big like this and some are kidney shaped, others are pear shaped. And you would use that um, to press the shape of entire jacket bags. That might be something worth looking into. I want to show you another tool that um, is quite basic but really helpful, which is a cloth brush like this. It's really helpful for pressing because sometimes, for example, with wool fabrics, you press a kind of sheen or edge into the pile. You might have edges from the seam allowance or you might have a shiny edge here. And for that, you can use the cloth brush to fix it. And that is done by applying some steam. So you soften the fibers again, and then you can brush with and against the pile to take out any edges or any shiny areas and achieve a nice looking flat surface again. Also, I really like cloth brushes with a handle because you can use the back of it as a clapper like this, and you get two tools in one, basically. The next tool I want to show you is a so-called tailor's anvil or point presser. It looks like this, and it's kind of a wooden anvil with a very pointy end in the front. And you would use this to work on very um, sharp details like the points of a collar or lapel, everything where you want to achieve a very sharp, crisp, pointy edge. As already in the previous samples, you would first soften the fibers by applying a bit of steam. Then you would uh, pull it over the tip of the anvil, push the seam allowances apart like this, and then you can press it open again with more steam. Linger on it for a bit so the fibers really get set into place. And then you can use the clapper to set it and to get a really crisp, sharp edge and to take out the heat and moisture. So now we have prepared the corner and we just have to turn it. You can see it already looks quite neat, but if you're not completely happy with it, you can press from the other side as well. Steam again. And set with the clapper. Yeah, now we have a quite neat corner and we can flatten it into the desired shape. And flatten it with the clapper. I probably also should mention that not all fabrics require all the action with the clapper. There are fabrics that take on the shape of pressing really well, like um, 
cottons or linen fabrics, but anything that has a bit more volume, that is a bit more unruly, it really benefits from uh, using a clapper because that forces the fibers into the desired shape. So we have a beautifully pressed corner here. The tailor's anvil was one part of it and the clapper the second tool. A pressing tool that you might already be familiar with is the sleeve board. Could have this shape for example. It's there to press any small tubular shapes like sleeves, trouser legs, anything that um, you would squash flat and get creases into the sides when you just press it flat on the table. And you can get them for quite cheap money in stores that sell domestic pressing equipment. So it shouldn't be too hard to find. So now that I have shown you all of these uh, pressing tools, I also want to encourage you to improvise if you don't have a tool that fits your specific needs available. For example, you can use kitchen items or household items if they are made from wood or um, anything that doesn't melt. One of my favorite examples is a wooden cooking spoon like this. I use it to press very small tubular shapes because I sometimes want to create boning channels or stuff like that. I find it much easier to press them neatly if I insert some kind of pressing stick into it. As always, we flatten the seam first, soften the fibers, then I would insert the wooden spoon here, open the seam allowance with my fingers and steam press it open. Then you can use the clapper again to flatten and set it. That way you can uh, really neatly press the seam allowance open before you turn the tube and that way it gets much crisper and cleaner than if you would turn it without any pressing and press it from the other side then. So I would recommend to do that extra step because it makes for a much nicer finish. Finally, I want to show you some a bit more advanced techniques, something that you often need for tailoring suits and jackets and it's about pressing those very crisp edges of collars and lapels or of uh, pocket flaps. That is a distinctive feature of high quality tailoring. For that technique we need an iron without steam or if you have a steam iron then just don't use the steam function. Then we need our spray bottle with water and we need our linen pressing cloth. We first place it flat on the table, then we add the additional piece of fabric on top of it to protect it from the tools. And now the linen pressing cloth comes into action and I would make it moist by spraying it. It shouldn't be soaking, drenching wet, but um, have a good amount of water in it. And we would place it on top of the layers and then use the iron. We are pressing until all the water from the pressing cloth has evaporated into the fabric underneath. We are transferring it from the pressing cloth into our garment. That takes a while. Now I'm testing if it's already dry. Still takes a bit more time. Now that I have transferred the moisture from the pressing cloth into my wool fabric, I remove this and then I press the clapper on the edge that I want to flatten like this. And um, if your clapper isn't very big, I recommend to use something in addition, like a book or something heavy to really weigh it down and um, apply more pressure. So I'm using a different tool on top of it to really weigh it down. And now this has to stay in place for a bit until the layers are cooled off and set into place. I know it sounds very time consuming to do this with all of the edges, but I can promise that it's really worth it. 
if you press details like that, it's permanently set with a lot of moisture, heat and pressure and it really creates sharp tailored edges that will be in your garment for a long time. Now that this has rested for a while, we remove the weight and the clapper and take a look at our round edge. And as you can see, it's really crisp and sharp. And this would, for example, make a nice um, lower edge of a jacket, um, hem and center front. I feel it's worth to do the extra steps with the linen pressing cloth and ironing it dry and then letting it set for a longer time with weight on top. So that is the magic of pressing. So now that I have shown you some tools and techniques to press, I would like to end with some general tips about pressing. The first thing, it might be quite obvious, but I still want to mention it. It's really important to check if the setting on the iron, the heat, is appropriate for your fabric. Because otherwise, instead of um, making your garment look better, you might ruin it if it's too hot or it might have not any effect at all if it's too cold. Maybe in general also do a little test on scraps of fabric to see and that will really help you to protect your garments and fabrics from any damage. The next thing I would like to mention as a tip, I know it's a lot of work, but I think it's worth it to press every seam directly after you have sewn it, because some people might think, okay, so I'm just sewing the garment and I couldn't do all the pressing afterwards in one go. But if you approach it like that, there are some parts of seams that you might not be able to access anymore once the whole garment is assembled. Therefore, it's really important that you press every seam immediately after you have stitched it, get it into a nice smooth shape and then move on to the next. The final and third tip that I have is it's really important to properly let cool down and set everything that you have pressed before you remove it from the board or from the tool that you used. Because if you don't do that, all the work you have put into pressing, it will be ruined. You might add new wrinkles while you handle it when it's still warm and not set. Or you might add any creases or just lose the crisp shape. I would really like to encourage you to take the time and let it set and cool and maybe make yourself a cup of tea <laughs> instead. Only when it's properly set and cooled, the fibers are stabilized again. They won't move and budge when you remove and handle the garment. And it's really important to wait that long before you continue with the next steps. Oh wow, that was so interesting. I feel like I learned so much about pressing. Well, that's good. I hope that it was interesting. You make it look so satisfying. It's like I want to try it right now. The thing about the wooden spoon. <laughs> oh my god, I've had a wooden spoon sitting in my kitchen drawer for I don't know how many years and never thought to use it for those little bits. Wow, that was that was so interesting. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for joining me and for teaching us all about the wonders of pressing. This has been so interesting for me and I'm sure for all ye folks out there if you stuck around this long. If you would like to see some more from Barbara, Barbara has, I mean, you've got a website, you've got an Instagram on yeah. screen. <laughs> uh, you've got a Patreon where you mm -hmm. offer tutorials, step-by-step yeah, -step written instructions on how to do corsets and how to do various techniques. Yeah, that's, that's true. My, my medium is more like writing, but it was really nice to do a video for a change. Yeah, it was a delight. And if you would like to learn more from Barbara, all of her links will be down below. Go see more of her work, it is fantastic. I'm sure you've already seen some of her workplaces because it's everywhere. <laughs> so <laughs> thank you for coming along on this little workshop adventure and we shall see you anon.